Hello and welcome to another episode of The Shooting Show. This evening I'm out on a beautiful bit of ground after foxes right in the heart of Sussex. So this particular bit of ground is home to quite a few foxes. I haven't shot this bit of ground for probably a year or so. So uh, definitely the fox numbers are built up. The farmer's seen quite a few on here and he's asked me to come up and see if I can thin them out a little bit. Now uh, we're also like to see quite a few fallow deer on this ground as well. Um, they won't be on the menu this week or this evening I should say. Um, they don't come into season until next week. But uh, we'll more than likely see a fair few around so that'll be, be good just to see what's on there. Okay, so the gear that we're using tonight is Pulsar Accolade 2s. Um, really nice these, like these. They've got the built-in laser rangefinder, which is a real big plus for me. They're also very, very clear and easy on the eyes. Uh, the other bit of kit that I'll be using is Pulsar's Thermion 2 rifle scope. As you can see, I've got that mounted here on my uh, BA Stealth Savage rifle uh, in 223. So this makes a really good foxing um, combo, this nice and short compact rifle, nice and easy to carry. Uh, yeah, and just real just nice, nicely balanced and very manoeuvrable. So uh, all in all, nice little combination that. And having the thermal imaging rifle scope on there almost makes it a bit too easy for foxing. But uh, nonetheless, it's a very effective tool. So just getting dark now, sort of uh, dusk, so um, I think what I'll do is I'll slowly make my way down through the fields. Uh, there's also one or two high seats on this farm, which some other lads have uh, put up for um, deer. So uh, I might be a little bit cheeky and just sit in one of them and uh, just have a little look for foxes, maybe put the caller out and if nothing comes through, I'll uh, fire that up and see if I can pull something in. Right, let's have a look. That's the first few fallow that I've seen. Um, there was a few uh, few does there, one or two youngsters and uh, a little pricket buck as well. So uh, that's good to see, they're about. So it looks like the grass is pretty long in most of these fields. Um, I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to head down to one of the high seats so uh, I can sit up in the high seat and get a better view 
over the field and that way I'll be able to see anything in the grass. Uh, I'll probably just put the cooler out, have a little squeak and see if I can pull something in. So this grass is really high here, it's probably getting on for two to three foot in places. So what I've done is I've put my recon tripod out here and I'm going to just try putting a cooler home from that and um, set up in the high seat just behind me here and see if I can pull something in. But, um, I'm not 100% sure that I'm actually going to be able to see anything in this field. Okay, so we've not had any luck there at all. Uh, the grass is just too long, so I'm gonna give that up as a bad idea. And uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head down to another little bit of ground, which has always got an abundance of foxes on it. So um, hopefully we'll get lucky down there. Now, as soon as I walk down to the first field, and straight away, I spot a fox.
Okay, so uh, off to a good start, first one down. That was probably only 80, 90 yards, something like that. Uh, it was just coming across the field and I give it a squeak, come trotting in. Give a shout, stopped it. Textbook, straightforward stuff. First fox down. Fox. That's a bobtail as well. Don't see many of them. Well, it's probably about the third or fourth one I've shot on this farm. that last one that was 110 uh, yards and um, I managed to squeak him in from the field out in the middle here and he was coming in lovely and I thought he was going to come through the hedge but the hedge if he'd come through it would have been probably not much more than about 50 meters in front of me um, so uh, I stopped squeaking just to wait and see where he was going to come out and I was actually a bit concerned there's a gateway just to my left here I thought he might have come up the hedge and come round into this gateway and been right on top of me uh, but as it happens I think he must have winded me because the wind's blowing that way and uh, he turned around and went back the way he was the way he'd come along that hedge row now um, he was just going back up along the edge of that hedge and I'd just give him a shout before he reached the top because there's a slight rise in the field there and uh, if he got to the top I'd have actually passed up the shot because he would have been skylined and it wouldn't have been a safe shot but uh, as it happened I managed to stop him just about halfway up there and uh, he just turned and looked round and that was his lot. So that's another one down. Well, I nearly lost that one. I squeaked that one in as well from the next field over. I've just literally just stood here and shot that one um, on the edge of that hedge there. Just about to walk away and go over the gate and go and pick it up. I looked out and there's another one in the field, literally the next field over, not more than about 100 yards from where that one was. Um, I've given it a squeak to try and draw it in into this field just here. and. Uh, it obviously got to the hedge and couldn't find a way to get through. Well, it must have found a way through because it, uh, it suddenly appeared literally just the other side of the gate here. I think it was about probably about 17, 18 yards. Um, so I quickly got a shot, which sounded good, but I couldn't understand how I fired and the thing was still stood there. I was a bit baffled for a second, then I realised that the scope, as I fired, literally just refreshed. Um, and then as it cleared, I saw the fox, he ran about 10-15 yards up that field, um, bleeding heavily, and I just saw him run up and then go over. 
so um, it's possible just as I uh, followed when it was as the, the scope was refreshing it maybe started to walk away or something I don't know yet until I go and pick it up and have a look but it's down anyway so uh, that's three down in probably about an hour so yet again this farm's been um, pretty productive let's keep my eyes peeled and would you actually believe it I've got a fox going across this field behind me I haven't got a safe shot but Hey! It's unbelievable the amount of foxes that are down there. That one just came from halfway down the field, come walking straight, practically straight up to me. I think uh, he probably would have pretty much walked up to me. He came within, um, he was 46 metres, so 50 yards. So, uh, absolute doddle of a shot. Uh, yeah, he had no idea I was there. I think I just gave him a quick shout and he stopped, knocked him down. It's just crazy the amount of foxes that come across these fields. There we go. There's our fox. It's one of this year's youngsters. Looks like I've got a little bit low. Tall fox. That's probably because he was standing there. Uh, standing so close. Another fox down. So this one is the last one that shot. Again, looks like that could be one of this year's. It's right over to a chest shot there. That was a little vixen this one. Dog fox. It's a big fox that too. That's a fair sized fox. It's quite heavy. Looks like it might even be uh, one of this year's youngsters too, but um, he's a big boy. Well, that's the end of another successful evening. Uh, the Savage Rifle and Pulsar Thermion 2 there working wonders, uh, along with the Accolade 2s for spotting. Makes for an awesome combination. Not the cheapest combination, but a very good one. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. And remember, if you're not already a member of Basque, it's time to join. See you soon.